Elon Musk's continuing dispute with Twitter has taken some bizarre turns. The most recent piece of evidence in court shows that the world's richest man may have backed out of the transaction, not because of fears about bots or Tesla's stock price, but because he feared World War III was imminent. With that, Musk stated why the following few days are especially dangerous in regard to Russia and World War III. Moreover, new details were leaked from this lawsuit that finally reveal why Elon Musk has a big advantage in this legal battle. This is a very interesting story, so let's explain it. While lawyers for Elon Musk and Twitter debate over whether a whistleblower's accusations may be added to the former's lawsuit, the firm claims Musk withdrew from the acquisition due to concerns about the onset of World War III. The world is giving all the right reasons for the Twitter-Elon pact to not happen. After committing to buy Twitter for $44 billion, Elon Musk sent in a text message to one of his Morgan Stanley bankers that he was considering withdrawing from the merger due to the likelihood of World War III. Musk advised Morgan Stanley's head of global technology investment banking, Michael Grimes, to take a break for a few days. The billionaire also mentioned a speech by Russian President Vladimir Putin in similar letters. Putin delivered a speech commemorating the 77th anniversary of the Allied triumph over Nazi Germany, in which he stated that Russia's choice to invade Ukraine was the only appropriate decision and falsely claimed that the West was preparing to attack Russia. Putin's remarks, according to Mr. Musk, were extremely crucial. It doesn't make sense to purchase Twitter if they're about to enter World War III, according to several news reports. Twitter lawyer Bill Savage read the statement out loud in court. Russian President Vladimir Putin justified his invasion of Ukraine in a speech on May the 9th. The invasion started two months before Musk agreed to buy Twitter. While Twitter referred to Musk's text as a money quote, Musk's lawyer, Alex Spiro, stated that the categorization of the texts in court was absolute nonsense, as seen by the full text chain. The complete text sequence will most likely be filed on the court docket. Spiro also commented, noting that any businessman would have been concerned about the stock market's reaction to a potential war. Musk agreed to purchase Twitter and make it private. When Musk announced in July that he was cancelling the agreement, Twitter almost quickly sued him to enforce the contract and force Musk to pay the agreed-upon $44 billion price. Musk is largely perceived to be on the defensive in the court battle, which is expected to begin with a five-day trial in early October. The complaint filed by Twitter against Musk claimed that he had no right to quit the transaction and that he attempted to do so since the value of Musk's investment in Tesla the anchor of his fortune has fallen by more than $100 billion since its peak. According to the lawsuit, Musk agreed to sell a friendly conditions with no funding contingency and no diligence restriction. More immediately, lawyers for Twitter and Musk battled over Musk's request to delay the trial by a month, as well as Musk's request to amend his lawsuit to include whistleblower charges made by Twitter's former security head. Musk's lawyers referenced a whistleblower complaint by Peter Zatko, Twitter's former top information security officer, who warned Congress in a formal declaration that Twitter was improperly dealing with different security vulnerabilities before the hearing. They claimed that the issues raised by Zatko demanded more time. In a ruling, Judge Kathleen McCormack addressed both issues, refusing Musk's request for a stay but allowing him to alter the countersuit. Musk contended that a four-week delay would not be detrimental to Twitter because the acquisition agreement's termination date of October the 24th, 2022, automatically stays if litigation is filed. An outer date of loan financing is April the 25th, 2023. Musk previously lost an attempt to postpone the trial until a few months, and McCormack cited that decision in judgment, denying Musk's application for a stay until mid-November. Musk can amend his countersuit against Twitter, according to McCormack, to add charges made in a whistleblower complaint filed by former Twitter security chief Peter Zatko. In reading Musk's communications, Twitter's counsel restated the company's position that Musk was in violation of the contract and that his main purpose for attempting to exit the arrangement was personal financial worries. During the hearing, Musk's lawyers contended that Twitter had discovered no evidence to back its theory that he dropped the transaction due to economic concerns. His lawyer stated during the hearing that their narrative of what happened isn't what happened. McCormack said that in most cases, the newly published whistleblower complaint would be a reason to allow an amendment under the low hurdle of Court of Chancery Rule 15. Twitter claims that the modification would be pointless, but their claims fall short of the extremely movement-friendly criterion of Rule 15. 
The judge is hesitant to say anything more about the merits of the counterclaims at this point, because they haven't been completely litigated. The international community will have to wait for the post-trial judgment. According to the judge, allowing Musk to modify his countersuit would be detrimental to the degree it would broaden discovery and delay the litigation timetable. However, this prejudice can be reduced by limiting extra discovery to the new accusations and sticking to the current case timetable. So that's what is going to happen. According to McCormack, Musk is thus allowed to only incremental discovery related to new claims, which may be made by focused document discovery and modest additional experts and fact witnesses. During a session, Musk's team claimed that Twitter has been too tardy in sharing discovery information. Zatko's complaint, which was sent to members of Congress and other federal organizations, accused Twitter of severe security flaws and accused the firm of lying regarding bots to Elon Musk. His complaint, however, does not appear to refute Twitter's public statement that less than 5% of its monetizable daily active users MDAU, are spam or fraudulent. His attempt to corroborate Musk's assertion that Twitter's spam estimate is wrong is based on countering spam bots that aren't included in the MDAU figure. According to a Wall Street Journal article that described a three-and-a-half-hour hearing, Twitter's lawyer described Zatko as a disgruntled former employee with an axe to grind and said that Mr. Zatko's work at the company wasn't linked to the accusation of undercounting of spam and bot accounts that Mr. Musk cited in his counterclaims. Twitter, according to Zatko, violated its 2011 deal with the FTC by failing to maintain a comprehensive security plan. He further claimed that senior executives deceived and or misled board members, users, and shareholders, and that the CEO, Parag Agrawal, directed him to give fraudulent and deceptive materials. Twitter wants Musk to buy the company at the previously agreed upon price of $54.20 per share. Its current share price is $38.65. Spyro chastised Twitter for not revealing what it understood exactly about Mr. Zatko's allegations of outrageous deficiencies linked to confidentiality and digital security, among many other accusations of mismanagement, according to the WSJ, and said that the whistleblower assertions could endorse Mr. Musk's allegations that Twitter acted illegally by misrepresenting the state of its business and key metrics about its platform users. Justice begs for an improvement here, according to Spyro. According to Twitter's lawyers, the second complaint is an attempt to slow down the court proceedings and go on a grueling fishing expedition for material to bolster Musk's cause for cancelling the merger transaction. Savitt explained that the opposition was wearing them down to avoid a truly speedy trial. Musk's attorneys, on the other hand, emphasized Zatko's credentials as a decorated CEO who had previously been promised a position as a US government official. They stated Musk had nothing to do with Zatko's whistleblower claim and that Twitter deliberately withheld bad information. It is unclear whether this will be sufficient to persuade the court in this case. In one exchange, the judge particularly noted Musk's decision to abandon due diligence prior to accepting the sale. Musk's lawyer asked, how could they not discover this in diligence, referring to Zatko's whistleblower report? He explained that it was information that was purposely hidden so they'll never know and use it against them or in other words, because the due diligence did not occur. Musk's lawyers, who are attempting to postpone the October trial, concluded the almost three-hour hearing by claiming that it is not their side who are causing this turmoil or delay. No one at Twitter is having all-hands-on-deck meetings today over the poop emoji from two months ago, he claimed, referring to Musk's remark directed at Agrawal. Twitter is holding all-hands meetings today because a senior decorated executive stated that the firm was committing fraud. The legal team for Tesla CEO Elon Musk claims that the social media business willfully deceived him about the daily number of users and spam registrations on its site, which amounts to fraud and breach of contract. And finally, if you are interested in awesome videos that will blow your mind, you need to check out this channel. That's it for today.